this is Wide Open YYC and I'm your host Tony Tattoo. We're back here again in Kildare's in the southwest of Calgary and we're uh, experiencing some great weather right now because of something we call Chinooks. Uh, and a Chinook basically is a warm wind that comes over the Rockies and it could be minus 20 one day, it could be plus 10 the next day. Uh, but we'll get back to that in a bit. Uh, I know why you're all excited. Uh, I know. <laughs> you're all excited about the two upcoming uh, elections in 2019. We have the Alberta election, we have the federal election. Uh, let's just say that for Alberta, our little experiment in socialism didn't work out so well. So let's, let's see what happens. I mean, biggest thing is please get out and vote. Use, your, use the freedom and the right you have to vote. Um, the Alberta election will uh, basically hinge on getting uh, pipelines built and a carbon tax. Federal election will hinge on just the carbon tax. Just recently, a brave rancher named uh, Sheila Griffith refused to pay the carbon portion of her propane bill, uh, addressing both Premier Notley and uh, Prime Minister Trudeau about their failure to get more Alberta oil to Tidewater. By the way, my $15 share of the pipeline is up for sale if anybody wants to buy it. Uh, the carbon tax, by the way, is ca Canada's way of apologizing for being an industrialized country, and all because of the climate change hoax. This by far is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated by the elite few. It surpasses the killer bee epidemic of the 70s and the, six, and the ice age of the 60s and global warming of the 80s. So since they couldn't make their minds up of what they're going to call it, they'll just call it climate change and that's basically what we call hedging our bets. This will go down as the greatest hoax ever. It uh, was perpetrated mostly by the Nobel Prize winning um, fraudster Al Gore. And you know that Al Gore's home in Tennessee sucks enough energy to power 232 regular households and Al's yearly energy bill is $16,000. Wrap your mind around that. Leonardo DiCaprio, who starred in The Revenant, uh, which was filmed in Calgary, Alberta experienced three Chinooks back to back at that time, uh, which again, gives us extreme weather. So he won an Academy Award. What did he do? Go up to receive his award and started lip servicing about climate change. After which he immediately jumped on his, his private jet, which is fossil fueled, to his fossil fueled yacht and uh, did a trip around the Mediterranean. So give me a break, you know, I'm tired of uh, being dictated to by global warming goofballs. The Paris Climate Accord, which Canada signed onto, is about as useful as rearranging the deck furniture on the Titanic. Let's look at a real, real man made threat to Mother Earth, like deorbiting space junk, for instance. Uh, when Mother Earth sneezes by the way of volcano eruptions, emits more carbon into the atmosphere in one day than all man-made emissions in one year. Mother Earth has been here billions of years before man's carbon footprint was even, was even a thing. And we'll be here billions of years after we're gone. So I can't believe how arrogant some people are in thinking man-made anything could destroy our Mother Earth. People build houses near active volcanoes in, in Hawaii and wonder why they have lava running through their living rooms. Finally, let's not overlook the trees for the forest, no pun intended. I've personally planted more trees than Al Gore, Leonardo DiCaprio, Rachel Notley, Justin Trudeau, and Elizabeth May put together. Let's spend our hard-earned money on reforestation and land reclamation, just like our environmentally responsible oil companies and let Mother Earth do her job. Hello, and welcome to Alternatively, where I turn the table on Mr. Tony Tattoo. Absolutely. <laughs> So I, uh, how this works is I don't know what you're talking about ahead of time. So I experience uh, your monologue in the moment. Right. Um, I'm just making excuses for the fact that I don't have anything prepared. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, where did you get your uh, degree in climate science? Absolutely have no degree in climate science whatsoever. <laughs> so, and, and I do enjoy talking about things I know very little about. <laughs> yes. And I like having, I like that we can put that disclaimer on this <laughs> because I'm also not a climate scientist, but I am of the completely opposite mind as you, Okay. where I have a bunch of stats in my head that I've absorbed over the years that I don't know are true. I couldn't point to an article, mm -hmm. um, but like to me, it is a, it is a no brainer that climate change is real. Um, to me, uh, it, I have heard that um, scientists like, most scientists agree on the fact that it's real. Well, first, first of all, um, if you don't mind, um, I agree that climate change is real. 
Okay. Climate change is real. Because think- because the earth is is a living breathing organism. It's it and it changes and, and climate changes in our direct relation to our to our distance from the sun. And it and- changes because we don't just do a circle, you know, around around the sun. It's like more of like an elliptical. <laughs> no. Yeah, maybe, again, I like talking about things I know a little about. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> because if we were, and some planets do, like Uranus has an oblong pattern around the sun, mm-hmm. and it affects the planet in a way that it would destroy Earth. Like, to have an oblong shape, mm-hmm. it, we would go from very high temperatures to very short temperatures every time we circle the sun. So you're saying that the Earth is always the same distance from the sun in its relatively, rotation, yes, always, yeah. relatively. Yes. Okay, whoa, okay, could it be relatively where the temperature over a thousand years could change one degree? I, I think I think more so uh, climate change, there have been spikes and, 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 uh, and bottoms to that for sure over the years, but there has been been no consistent spike like there has been since the industrial revolution mm-hmm. like that is something that you can point at and say hey when we started um like industrial manufacturing and burning so- fossil fuels and all this stuff the temperature has increased steadily since then mm-hmm. you're right there have been spikes in the past but that is more to do with natural occurrences like you mentioned volcanoes that type of stuff like mm-hmm. the Earth is affected by all that stuff. I think it's silly to assume that the Earth isn't affected by what humans do. Okay, so uh, here's a question for you. Carbon tax that we're we're supposedly supposed to be going to be paying for, where does that money go and what does it do? Where where does the buck end? You're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. I I don't know. I would hope that it goes into uh, investing in renewable energy sources. Yet you don't mind paying it not knowing where it goes? I don't know where most of my tax dollars go, to be honest. Well, they go to infrastructure, they go to, uh, right. to uh, programs, social programs, they go to, well, building a new arena if we could get right. one. Right, so I would assume that the carbon tax would also go to all of those places, no? Uh, I'd like to know where it goes before I decide. So I'm- you want to know where it goes specifically, your dollars for the carbon tax? For carbon tax dollars, yeah. But that I, I doubt that they have a fund, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I doubt that they collect all the carbon tax, have it in one one place and be like, okay, where are we going to use this money that we've collected for the carbon tax? I assume it's tax dollars. Like, but they're going to be cutting us checks back off that fund, so it's got to go into a kitty somewhere because they're going to—they're basically just going to give it back to us. So, so they your, say. So then, what's your problem with it? My problem is, is that why take it from me off from the beginning? If I'm going to take five dollars off you and just go, I—I I did that only to give it back to you. I, I will be honest. I—I I am not well versed in the carbon tax and and what it means. I will go back to saying my hope for it is that it will be invested in renewable energy sources because I'm of the opinion, and obviously it's a little hypocritical living in Calgary and working in the oil and gas industry, I'm of the opinion that renewable energy is where we should be headed. Um, And I've said this in the past, I think on the show, Mm -hmm. that yes, there will be a drop off in jobs in the oil and gas industry and a rough period of adjustment while the jobs are being created in renewable energy. That's not gonna be fun for anyone, mm-hmm. and I'm not, I'm not oblivious of the, the human impact that has, but I think overall, um, in, in, uh, overall it's going to uh, help people for generations mm-hmm. to have clean, renewable energy. Right, and to me, um, Nuclear energy achieves that and so, because it's renewable because France for instance and this I do know about <laughs> And that it is a fact that France actually re, uh, Reuses their nuclear waste, right? So would you be Would you be fine with Canada investing in nuclear energy and lessening? Uh, uh, how much we use oil and gas? It's more efficient so then it's it's I, the efficiency I, is that like but now now it, it but it's been regulated to the point of of it's not even profitable but or is worth it, it is it only the efficiency that makes you want it or is it the fact that it's cleaner than oil and gas both and, yeah so to me bringing it back to climate change hmm. i would be i would be happier for anything that is cleaner than oil and gas but it takes oil and gas to build these things it takes oil and You're gas right. well, it a, takes it takes uh oil and gas to build wind farm fans 
That's true, and it takes it takes uh, petroleum to build uh, solar panels and all that type of stuff. You're absolutely right, but the more we can lessen our 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 uh, need for oil and gas, and start investing in these other things, that's a great thing. Even if we, it's not it's not a like well we have to use oil and gas f for to build this, so why don't we just not build it? It's like well no, we're still working toward getting cleaner energy and and stopping climate change or at least slowing it down well that that whole decision is way below my pay grade but, so but that's why we're but, talking about it right like but, that's why i wouldn't want anyone to think that we are experts in this because we're not mm -hmm. we're just uh telling our thoughts about what we've read and what we think about the the current climate well our, the current situation to me is is we're reliant on on oil and gas to provide jobs for people to feed their families and yes i do agree that that we need to work towards renewable resources renewable renewable energy cleaner energy i agree with that um i think pollution is a bad thing <laughs> it's you know uh but i also think that uh when it comes to things like the paris climate accord yeah. I, my problem I have with the whole thing, and it doesn't mean that we, we, do not, we do not negate our responsibility, but if, all, if it's not a level playing field for all countries, well, I don't, I, 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 think that, to be. I, th I think that's absolute, absolute bullshit. But that's what it was supposed to be, right? Like, if the U.S. hadn't have pulled out of it, would you, would that, would you feel differently about it? Or is that the reason why... I just think that, all, you know, if, if it was such a, a problem that the world leaders, all world leaders thought that this is an issue and we need to all be involved in slowing it down, That's then I would think that all countries should be involved, but they're not. That's what it was supposed to be. So the level, ple the, 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 the field is not so, level at all. But it's, you, you agree that it's, if it's that important, then it's a good thing to be doing that. Just because somebody else isn't doing it, we shouldn't do it either? I'm, yeah, actually, that's exactly what I'm saying. Really? Absolutely. Even though you agree that it's the, a good the, the thing biggest, to do? The biggest emitters of, of pollution, China and India, are not playing ball with this thing. And, uh, and, and we're, supposed to, we're supposed to break into our pocketbooks be, because of some feel-good feel -good policy that our government has. I would say, look, we don't play until everybody plays. I, I disagree on a couple counts there. The feel-good policy to me is like... We've already established that you agree that we should get cleaner energy for our children's future. Absolutely, like and it's, and it's going to take oil and gas to get us there. To get away from oil and gas, yes, we will have to continue to use it for hopefully a short amount of time. But but when it comes to pointing at China, for example, and saying, "Hey, they're not doing this. Why do we have to?" You could apply that to human rights. No. Why can why can why can they uh 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 why why don't they have a minimum wage why do we have to have a minimum wage like that type of stuff like to me pointing at someone who's doing it objectively or subjectively worse and saying like well why can't we do that too and it, well fair enough but that's apples and oranges to me but uh my opinion too also is the fact that we're not even going to reach our we're not even going to reach our goals but you're going to pull money you're going to the government's going to pull money out of my pocket is to not to not reach our goal is the fact that we can't reach the goal uh, mean that we shouldn't try to me it's it comes down to what you believe is right mm. and if you're willing to uh, do what it takes to get there okay alternatively speaking alternatively speaking <laughs> thank you Tony all right Hey, this segment is Bar Talk, and I'm Tony Tattoo, and I'm here along with Shauna Lee, the Queen of Mean. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing excellent. Yeah, Listen, uh, we talked about, uh, we were talking about earlier, uh, the, uh, the, the bar scene, the band bar scene back in the 80s, early 90s, yes. uh, both in, in Alberta. I mean, it, it was like uh, any, any uh, small town had two bars. They had the rock bar, and they had the country bar. Yeah, so uh, and uh, I believe that uh, you uh, you were uh, working in some of these clubs. Um, I wasn't working in the clubs until late '90s because I was underage. <laughs> so I was well, you know, back then, you know, 
fake ID only cost 20 bucks. You pay the high school geek to do it for you, and that was all they needed in clubs back then because they didn't really, they weren't as on top of it as they are these days, obviously. So I was only 15 when I started going to the clubs. I think it was a lot easier for women to kind of doll up and, and look yeah, of age than guys. Oh, yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, but yeah, no, early 90s, Skyrim, City Limits, Electric Avenue, uh, Livewire, Frankie and Johnny's. Um, bands like Smash LA, yeah. um, Age of Electric started out there as well. Uh, I believe somebody else had a band called Sinister Minister. Never heard of them. Never heard of them? No. Oh, okay, could have sworn you were the never. lead singer of that band. I don't know. <laughs> May have. <laughs> May have. I will not confirm or deny. <laughs> okay, fair enough. No, those were the good old days. Those were definitely the good old days. There's a lot of uh, live music in and around Calgary. Now to find live music is next to nil. There's only probably a couple clubs left that do live music. Which clubs are those? Uh, well, Morgan's, but they just shut down too. I don't know if you've heard about that. Right, they had, uh, they had the broken toys thing going on uh, yeah. Tuesday nights? Yes. Yeah. Every Tuesday, the old uh, 80s hair metal nights. Those yeah. were always good, fun, drunk nights. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of places anymore, like Ranchman's, I think they do live music uh, during Stampede. Mm -hmm. uh, Back Alley, that's gone. Now it's called something else. I think they do bands occasionally. But there's just, there's not the, the vibrant music scene that used to be in the 90s and early 2000s. That's well, that, that's, uh, that's a good point you brought up, and I'm glad you brought it up, because there is a vibrant scene, music scene in Edmonton right now at the current time. So what do you think is wrong with Calgary? I think there's way too many new Euro pubs and like they're trying to cater to like the younger, you know, the younger generation. Because right. um, that's basically the younger generation. I mean, not, not there's anything wrong with them, but um, they don't appreciate the old, the old stuff like we do. Like right. the old rock and roll and that sort of thing. They're more into the hip hop and you know newer stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I think obviously Edmonton's still got a lot more rock and roll left in it. Calgary doesn't seem to have that same Staple. Where it used to be, uh, Calgary used to have that that whole. I, I thought Calgary was a more vibrant scene than Edmonton was. It was at one point. I think it definitely was. Well, there's one. There's a couple things that are happy in Edmonton compared to Calgary. Where there's actually bands that are now running clubs. That that like basically there's one out there called House of Seven now, um, run by by. Uh, by basically bands that are that are just basically giving uh, opportunity to, to uh, live bands to come out and play, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, like I said, they, they actually the musicians themselves get involved in this thing, yeah. um, and I find in Calgary, I mean, we have the same six bands just rotating through two or three clubs, you know, and and you know you can only see them a couple times, right, before you're like, oh, here you go, right? Yeah. I mean, I hate to be that way, but it's it really it's just. You know, you're excited for about one night, and then after that, it's like, okay, well, you know, you got a choice of going to going to that pub you're talking about, or you know, these Euro pubs and stuff like that, and and uh, or you know, actually picking up and going to a live club, you know. Yeah, which there are very few few left. That's for sure. Actually, I have a friend who plays in a band, and uh, they're actually doing gigs in Airdrie right. this weekend because there's just nothing. There's not a whole lot in town mm -hmm. uh, open and available, and of course. The, the places that do still have like bands, they have their rotation of the regular right. bands like Broken Toys, Curious George, all yeah. those guys. Um, so they're actually taking gigs in Airdrie and Strathmore now, right. just to, to kind of get out there and, and play more. Right. But that's like on the outskirts of town. So. so I think the onus is on. I think the onus is on. First of all, you know, like obviously bar managers or club owners or whatever, always looking at the bottom line. Fair enough. Um, but. Here's the challenge to the bands out there, you know, get together, uh, pool resources, um, you know, get, get the, you know, why sit around and bag about the music scene when you could probably do something about it? Yeah. Well, just get yourself up. I mean, Curious George, those, those bands, they, I mean, they've been around for years because they have a following. Yeah. But in order to get that following, you have to, you know, know the places to play, the people to talk to. Right. And that's why it's hard for bands these days. They're struggling, right, to, to get out there because it you know, seems like everybody's doing it, but yeah. you have to have that following, right? Right. So if 
you don't have the venues to play, you're not going to have a following. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that seems like the final word there. Uh, seems to be. <laughs> get out and get involved. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks, Shauna Lee. Thank you, Tony. Till next time. You bet. Welcome back to Bar Talk, and I'm with uh, one of my buddies here, uh, Eric Alas. How you doing? Fantastic, thank you. Excellent. Anyway, well, thank you for coming in, and uh, and uh, we're going to do a little wrap about. Uh, I've just brought brought up something a little bit earlier on about uh, putting out my fifteen dollars worth of a useless pipeline for sale. Oh yes. Uh, so, what are you going to do with your fifteen dollars worth? Uh, to be frank, I'm not really sure. I mean, I don't really pay for my truck that I already own, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that money, but. Uh... I guess I'm going to have to figure it out. I mean, 15 bucks, that's two beers. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can run that through the pipeline and that way I don't have to bring it with me next time I go out to the coast and I can save money on gas. I don't know. <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> Make it efficient. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's your feelings on the fact that we can't seem to get a shovel on the ground here? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's American lobbyists. I mean, they're looking out for their interests so we can see where that's going. Uh, mm -hmm. You're hiding, you're hiding money or laundering money in whichever form or fashion. But at the end of the day, it's got to get a product to market and helps everybody else versus supporting countries in the south, countries that uh, enslave women, torture, uh, child labor. I mean, Lord knows that's a that's a long rant, and mm. uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure we have enough time for that. But uh, <laughs> to be fair, I just I'd like to see us just give ourselves a fair chance in uh, in an open free market. I mean, that's what. That's what this country was about, mm -hmm. and it uh, doesn't seem to be leading that way anymore, to be honest. So, uh, well, we also know that uh, railways are regulated by by the federal government. Fair, yeah. right? So, basically, wherever they want to put a railway line, they just said we're doing it. It goes, you know, Farmer Joe, here's the, here's top dollar for your land. This is going through. Why can't they do the same thing with pipelines? Um, I don't know. Ask Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about the Koch brothers? Yeah. Well, there you go, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> the problem is years ago we've given too many rights to too many people and not enough um, strength in our own economy, our own country, and our own, uh, our own pride, to be honest. I mean, back in the day they would blow a route and uh, say, hey, this is the best route, give right. people fair dollar and move on, move forward, because it's the best thing for everybody else. So why not, why not do that right now? Uh, I mean, people are getting their fair dollar value for pipelines uh, going through their lands. It's safer than rail, it's safer than truck, and it's more efficient, and the carbon footprint is less. I mean, for heaven's sakes, look at how much uh, coal is burned in an engine on, mm -hmm. a, on a rail car, diesel fuel burnt. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, right. it's hypocrisy at its finest. What would you do if, uh, if you were prime minister? in uh, getting any of this d stuff done. <laughs> uh, stop taking selfies. Uh, that would be a good start. I'd focus on what was important. Uh, I'd clean up my own house first before looking outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd start listening to people, to be honest. Uh, I don't believe our current Prime Minister listens to anybody but those who are within his own party, his own province, um, mm. with his own inner circle. I don't, uh, I don't truly believe he cares um, and that's not Western sentiment I think that's just national sentiment so there's no Bollywood dancing for you uh, no and I uh, I do love good Eastern uh, East Indian wedding don't get me wrong but uh, that's not where we're going with this that doesn't do anybody any good serving in a professional role absolutely uh, what would you do if you were voted in uh, as Alberta's premier Ooh, well scrap the carbon tax it would be my focus uh, as, pre uh, as Premier of Alberta. I'd take that to the federal government. And uh, I mean, when Saskatchewan doesn't have the same issues as we do here within Alberta, why would we not be equal with the same resource? Right. I mean, it's more, uh, it's more beneficial to drill oil in Saskatchewan than it is in Alberta. And we're a quick drive away. Mm -hmm. So how does that make sense? I mean, I think we're creating a segregated country, to be honest. Uh, between the east, between the west, um, between not necessarily the prairie provinces, but I mean, just cross the border to BC, and mm -hmm. I mean, there's 
I know people that like to vacation down in the States and they'll pack jerry cans just so they don't have to gas up in BC. Right. They'd rather give the money to the States than our, yeah. next, our neighboring province. Right. Right. I mean, the fuel's coming from the same place, so what's the issue, right? Exactly. Let's take care of everybody else. Right. Um, so oil and gas companies pulling out of Calgary now, what is, um, is that part and parcel of, of what, what's going on in the, in the economic climate in Alberta? It doesn't make sense to put your money uh, down on a losing bet. Uh, there's no incentive. There's no future. Uh, nothing but taxation, regulation. And to be fair, I, I'm an individual that wants to protect the environment for mm. my children, children's children. That's not what I'm getting at. But when they can make more money elsewhere, uh, anybody with any business sense would do that. Why, why invest and earn 5% on a dollar when you can earn 50% elsewhere? It just doesn't make sense. Okay, so say if you were the city mayor, <laughs> how, would you attract, how would you attract business back to Calgary? Uh, try to open the doors. Mm -hmm. uh, try to encourage that uh, influx of uh, not necessarily foreign cash. I mean, bringing in uh, money from overseas is excellent at stimulus, but uh, again, we need to develop from within and uh, we have enough money here. We really do. Right. And uh, we have financiers, be it your Warbird Pincuses of the world, mm -hmm. that are willing to uh, invest money in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a sound business, in a sound economy, and in a entrepreneurial economy. But what we're doing is, I mean, Alberta's known as being an entrepreneurial hub, right. but what we're doing is we're shooting ourselves in our, in our foot, really. Going into 2019 now, if there's one thing you could tell me to improve the, 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 the situation in Alberta, what's the one thing that you, you would start today? You would say, today we start this. Step with a positive foot. Mm -hmm. like, we need to change our attitude, find a solution, work towards that solution. Uh, buzzwords aside, we need to look at how we as a group can improve our position locally, nationally, internationally, and uh, really just look to stimulate our own economy from within. Absolutely. Find, find different ways. If there was one thing I could tell everybody is get out and vote. Thank you very much, Eric. Thanks, Tony. All right. Take care. You too. Hey, this is Dan, and this is my rant for this week. Yeah, I, I got to be honest with you, this growing swell of people I see on social media saying, fuck fentanyl dealers, I, I, I got to disagree with you. Um, I don't think it is the dealer's fault he's trying to make money for his own family. And the fact that you didn't listen to every single PSA that you heard from the time you were two years old to the time you were 18 that said, don't do drugs, you'll fuck up your life and you might die. But you were still like, eh, I think I'm going to try drugs. And then you did and you got addicted and you fucked up your life and you tried the fentanyl and then you died. But for some reason, it's the guy who sold it to you's fault. No, it's your fucking fault. Healthcare is free in this goddamn country. You can get mental health, you can get free needles, you can get whatever you... That's how much healthcare is free in this country. You can get free needles for your drugs. That's how much this rest of the country cares about you. Stop doing drugs, stop overdosing when you know the dangers of it, and get yourself some goddamn help. It's free! Fuck sakes! And you're gonna blame the guy who sold it to you? Take some self-responsibility and realize you have a problem and get clean. I'm sick of burying my friends and listening to my friends rant about how horrible it is. It's brutal. We all know it is. Pull up your goddamn pants, be an adult, and stop doing drugs. That's it for this week. Grow up. Thank you for watching Wide Open YYC. This is Tony Tattoo, and I'm signing off. And uh, cheers. <laughs>